20 minutes and 31 seconds. That's how long it took for this game to uh, cut the scenes and let me actually play it. 20 minutes, 31 seconds. That's when Metal Gear Solid 3 gives you the distinct honor of retrieving a bag. A warm-up mission that took about 25 seconds before the game hit me with another 11 minutes and 10 seconds of uninterrupted video and dialogue. If you don't like slow games, deliberate gameplay, and seemingly endless cutscenes, you're probably going to hate this, and that's a shame. It's definitely not for everyone, but Metal Gear Solid 3 is about as good as video games get. Released in 2004, Metal Gear Solid 3 Snake Eater was the last Metal Gear for the PlayStation 2, an exit to the next generation that couldn't have been more spectacular. For Konami and designer Hideo Kojima, the result of that familiarity was graphics like this. Metal Gear Solid 3 is a gorgeous game regardless of platform, but on the PS2, this defies conventional thinking about what Sony's system was capable of. Of course, there's more to Metal Gear Solid 3 than just the graphics, especially in this version of the game. This is the 2006 re-release, subtitled Subsistence, and bulked up with more features, more options, and more face paint. There's also a better camera, which improves Metal Gear Solid 3 so much that it arguably makes it a whole new game, and may or may not be more important than the face paint. But to me, the improved camera is really what makes Subsistence such a great re-release. The original Metal Gear Solid 3 utilized a perspective that wasn't exactly ideal for the new environment Snake finds himself in, but in Subsistence, those annoying angles were replaced with a third-person camera the player can manipulate freely. A dramatic improvement that, even by itself, makes this the definitive version of Metal Gear Solid 3. Oh, and there's also the new multiplayer modes. Oh, and the, uh, the inclusion of the first two Metal Gear games for the MSX2. Oh, yeah, and, and more new gameplay modes than you can shake a freaking Kodak at. Now, obviously, Konami packed subsistence with as much content as they possibly could, but otherwise, the core experience is very much Metal Gear Solid 3. A distinction with which comes a simple truth. This game is awesome. And one of its most interesting advancements is the implementation of camouflage. The radar you used in prior Metal Gear Solid games hasn't even been invented yet, so staying hidden and moving with caution is perhaps more important than ever in this one. Adjusting your camouflage to match your settings and then finding the best place to hide is a clever addition to the series, as well as a really cool spin on its established conventions. Something there. Chronologically, this is the first game in the Metal Gear series, taking place in 1964 within a Soviet jungle and following Naked Snake, a commander to Solid Snake in later games, and someone with whom he shares a, a close relationship. It's interesting to play a prequel and witness the origin of the franchise, to say the least, but more importantly, this is also an extremely well-made video game that's just a lot of fun to experience. And again, huge thanks to Kevin from California for making our week here at Undertow. You've easily won the award for best donation ever. So again, thanks a lot, Kevin. We really appreciate it. But as I've mentioned in all of our recent Metal Gear coverage, these games are just not for everyone. They're slow, they're methodical, and if you're not into 20-minute cutscenes, one might call them painfully boring. But if you do fall into Metal Gear Solid 3's stealthy trap, you'll be rewarded with one of the very best games of the last generation. Just make sure you have plenty of popcorn. Ah!